thank you for holding everybody. Uh, just to let everyone know, Coach Anderson had a, uh, a commitment today. He was unable to be on the call, but in his place, we do have Arkansas State Offensive Coordinator and Assistant Head Coach Walt Bell. If you have a question for Coach Bell, please dial star 1 on your phone at this time to get in the queue. Again, star 1 to get in the queue to ask questions of Assistant Head Coach and Offensive Coordinator Walt Bell. Uh, Coach, while we're waiting for that, would you mind starting us off with a opening statement? Uh, yeah, you know, really briefly, um, you know, obviously we're coming off a really tough loss, you know, against uh, Louisiana Lafayette last week. Um, you know, our big challenge this week will be, you know, number one, to overcome that as a football team. Uh, number two, you know, the amount of travel, traveling all the way to Idaho, um, coming off that loss, the amount of travel we're about to have, and just to make sure that we're focused and ready to play Idaho. Um, Idaho is really dangerous. Um, obviously, they scored a bunch of points offensively, you know, so we, uh, we're going to have a work cut out for us on defense. Got to do a much better job than did last week. Um, and then offensively, you know, we, we've got to uh, continue to be more consistent and, uh, you know, just keep getting better and better and better, specifically on third down and down there in the red zone and make sure that we're finishing with points because, you know, we fully do expect this to be a great football game and uh, we're excited to play. Hey, Coach, our first questions come from Matt with the Jonesboro Sun. Uh, Matt, please go ahead. Hey, Coach, how you doing this morning? I'm good. Brother, yourself? Uh, I'm doing fine. Hey, I had a couple questions about injuries. Uh, J.D. McKissick kind of limped off the field, looked like an ankle injury the other night. What's his situation? Yeah, you know, same thing. That's exactly what it was. He's still a little slow and a little bit of discoloration. Um, you know, he uh, we practiced on Sunday. We held him there just for precautionary reasons, just to make sure that, uh, you know, we give him as much time as he needs. Um, J.D.'s a really, really tough kid. I'm sure, you know, I had, you know, we'll, his status tomorrow at practice, um, you know, kind of is yet to be seen. But, uh, you know, as we get on to the week, you know, we kind of fully expect him to play um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's an incredibly tough kid. You know, I, I can guarantee you that, that he wants to play. He'll do everything he can in his power to be out there. Um, you know, so he, he'll definitely make the trip with us. Um, you know, and I fully expect him to play. It's just at what level just depends on, you know, kind of how healthy really is he. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's got a little bit of an ankle injury right now. But, uh, you know, I think he'll be fine. Uh, you know, we just kind of have to see as the week progresses. Another guy who kind of hobbled off the field late was Darian Griswold. I don't know if that was just a, a ding or what. but uh, Yeah, but he, he just got bumped. Griswold will be fine. He, uh, you know, he just – he sore and beat up and, you know, kind of got beat up, you know, just kind of, you know, fell a little awkwardly. But uh, he practiced yesterday and moved around great and looked pretty good. I was wondering, uh, hadn't really gotten an update on Daniel Keith. Is, you know, Coach has said he might be uh, ready at some point in the season. Is he still, you know, is that, that, not, that not the case right now? No, no, no. He, he is 100% ready. Um, you know, obviously Kyle Harris is an older kid. And so when we lost Colton Jackson earlier in the game, we went with Kyle. Um, you know, who play okay, you know, and, and filling in for Colton. Um, you know, Daniel's going to be a great player. Um, you know, right now we're just trying to see if we can possibly make it, you know, if we can possibly make it through the season without having to really play him so he can still get his red shirt because that is ultimately what's best for him. Um, but, no, he, he, he prepares every day to play, um, you know, and at some point we may have to play him. We're doing everything we can right now. Um, you know, to, uh, if if we don't have to play him and that kid's able to get his red shirt here, that's what we need to do. That's what's best for that kid. Um, but, you know, if we're forced into a situation where he has to play, he'll he'll, he'll go out there and he'll be just fine. He uh, He's ready to roll. Was that uh, that game against Lafayette, was that as physical a game as you guys have played uh, this year? Um, you know, I, I would say so. I think them, you know, I thought uh, – Going into that game, I thought it would be our biggest challenge up front, and it definitely was. Uh, they were as good, you know, um, if not better than Utah State. You know, and that's not a slight to Miami or Tennessee. It's just Utah State had a bunch of older physical kids in terms of length. Um, you know, Lafayette, you know, same thing, really big, physical, rotated their kids, had a good scheme. Um, you know, and I would say that probably was the most, you know, most visual game we played in, and probably the most difficult that we've had in handling those guys up front. But uh, you know, all credit to those guys; they did a great job, and you know, we got to get ready for the next one. Uh, lastly, just you know, what would you say the overall health of the team is right now? And did y'all kind of walk away from that game a little, a little bumpy or a little bruised up? Yeah, you know, 
honestly, the you know kind of the health, you know, is we're about you know that stretch right now, we're about the country to beat up. Uh, you know, and you know the, the biggest thing is, is obviously we, we are very thin. You know, we've already lost three or four kids for the year that, that we expected to be contributors. Um, you know, and uh, Humes and Jonah Hill. And, you know, I mean, so we, we we've lost a you know a, a couple guys, but you know this point of the year, kind of everybody's beat up, everybody's bruised up. You know, uh, you know you got some of those kids that you know may only get to practice on Wednesday or Thursday to be ready on a Saturday, just making sure they're healthy and ready to play. Um, but I don't think we're any more beat up than any other team in the country. You know, we've had our fair share of injuries, but, uh, you know, so is everybody else. I, I think we're in a good place right now. Now, can we afford to lose a bunch of other guys with how thin we are on both sides of the ball, especially in the line scrimmage? No. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think we're really any different than anybody else. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you, Matt. And our next question is coming from Brad Bobo. Uh, Brad, please go ahead. What do you say, Coach? How you doing, Brad? Everything good? It's good. Hey, um, I know a lot of times with those receivers, sometimes you think it's the right guy in the right place at the right time. But with that said, I mean, we get to talk about sort of Dijon. These last three ball games certainly look like looks like he is emerging into to quite a weapon out there. Yeah, you know, and and you know the thing about Dijon, he's still just starting to play football for the first time. You know, last year he was not a contributor really at all. Um, you know, he's down on scout team at this time last year. And uh, as he continues to develop into his body and, uh, you know, really just starts to, you know, those, those game repetitions that you get, you really can't substitute for anything else. But, you know, you could see him, you know, just in the last couple of weeks just in terms of creating the explosive play. Um, he is a big physical body that can really run, you know, as evidence kind of last two weeks. He had some really big plays, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, I mean, if he can continue to develop over the next couple of years, you know, he, he could be a really, really, really special player as he continues to grow in his confidence, um, you know, as he continues to improve in terms of his route running, getting out of cut. You know, when you're a big, tall body like that, you know, that's kind of the last thing that comes is when those guys start to really know and understand their body. And, um, you know, as he continues to improve, I, I think he can be as special as he wants to be. And, uh, yeah, we, we have really been aided by some big plays of his in the last couple of weeks. With Idaho, I mean, what you've seen on tape, since I mean, it's kind of geographically just such a different part of the country, does that translate? they do anything either you know, different style-wise or a different maybe even type of athlete than you see against other people in the league? No, you know, in, in terms of athletes, you know, I think they're really comparable to everybody that we play. Um, you know, they're kind of like us. They've got guys that are really good players, and they've got some guys that, um, you know, are, are people that you either need to protect or, or guys that, you know, you have to uh, kind of coach around a little bit. But, they, you know, they're no different than us. You know, I mean, uh, I, you know, in terms of scheme, you know, they're, they're a base four down front. You know, they'll base out of a four down. Um, some, you know, third down situational scores on stuff. Sometimes they'll hop into some three down. But um, quarters base defense, you know, they're they're really sound. Um, you know, early in the season on defense, it looked like they kind of had some schematic issues. And you can tell as the season has progressed, they've got more, you know, they, they've gotten simpler, you know, trying to be more sound and put their kids in positions to make plays. And, um, you know, and, and they're very similar to the other guys who play, you know. Um, I know that, you know, Coach Cree on those guys are always going to do a great job, um, you know, offensively and defensively of, of, of being sound, well coached, go play hard. Um, you know, just the biggest thing for us is we got to continue to get better offensively um, and just keep improving, keep improving, keep improving, be better each week, you know, and then by then hopefully we'll have a, uh, a pretty nice little sporty offense. 